What's in my camera bag? Well, I'm glad that you asked that because that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. Also, a little disclaimer. You're one of those people that really hate gear talk. This is not gonna be a good video for you, sir. So you should just skip this video, resist the temptation to leave a mean comment, and move on. Because I know that gear does not make the photographer, but it is fun to talk about. And so we're gonna do so in this video. Okay, so first up is the camera bag itself. This is kind of my winter setup. This is the Shimoda 60 liter. And I love this bag. I would never go back to any of the previous bags that I've had simply because this bag is comfortable, it's functional, holds tons and tons of gear, actually more than I'm willing to carry, and is just an awesome bag. In the wintertime, I actually prefer the 60 liter over the 40 liter. During the summertime, I prefer the 40 liter over the 60 liter, mainly because I don't need the extra storage. During the wintertime, it's really nice to have this extra bit of storage because I'm packing things like winter coats or you know if I'm hiking into an area I might need an extra set of gloves or hats or whatever that extra storage is really nice when you need that warmer clothing and I typically don't need that in the summertime hence the 40 liter but it's cold out so I've got the 60 liter. On the outside of the bag, I have a little first aid medical kit that I got at REI. This is not something that I always pack with me, but if I'm leading a workshop or hiking further than you know a mile or so, I take this because you don't wanna be without it in a bad situation. The bag has a whole bunch of different compartments. I've never really reviewed the 60 liter, but I use it a lot. The bag has a top compartment up here. It also has like a flip I guess uh, hiking bag style uh, duffel top. It's got this back pocket here. I mount my tripod to the side. And on the front, it also has a zipper pocket, which currently I have, lens cloth. You can put a smaller phone in there. On the other side, it has this mesh pocket, which you can either put a water bottle in, or in this case, I have this cute little guy. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket, a really cool little thing that I'm experimenting with. I currently use this just for B-roll type stuff. It's nice to have a small vlogging camera uh, for those times when you don't want to carry a lot of gear, or maybe it's just like a little B-roll shot on the hiking trail or whatever. It's nice to have such a small, compact little setup. It's uh, pretty cool, and the footage is okay. It's not the best. It's kind of GoPro quality, but the gimbal is incredibly smooth and uh, produces really nice video, actually, really stable. My gear setup from last year has actually changed entirely. I don't have the same bag. I don't have the same camera gear. I've got all new everything. I'm using all Shimoda bags right now because they are just so comfortable, so functional. The material has held up really well. The zippers all continue to work really well. Um, I use and abuse these bags, and the, probably the biggest upside to these bags is just how comfortable they are. They are incredibly comfortable. They're the most comfortable bag I've ever had because these straps on the front are so wide and so, so thick and nicely padded. It just makes for a really comfortable bag. So mounted on the side, I have my tripod, which is a different tripod than the last video. So this tripod is the Really Right Stuff Versa 2.4. So this is a two series tripod, four section, and I got it because now that I'm shooting mirrorless gear, I don't need quite as large of a tripod as I used to have. I still have the, the 3.4L from Really Right Stuff, but I find that most times that thing is just kind of overkill. This is really nice anytime that I'm traveling or hiking. I very much appreciate the lighter tripod. The ball head is the BH40 from Really Right Stuff. Uh, this just makes a really nice, fairly lightweight, but very stable tripod setup. And I really appreciate the weight savings. I also have the Rock Grabber feet. They are pretty cool because they really just work awesome in most terrain. Don't ever shoot real estate with this stuff on hardwood floors. It'd chew them up pretty bad. This is kind of my go-to anytime I'm hiking anywhere or flying anywhere. So in the top of the bag, we have an accessory pouch. This accessory pouch is typically where I keep my batteries. It's also where I keep uh, lens cloths, 
and shutter release. The shutter release that I have is a wireless shutter release. So I plug this in to the top of my camera. This is made by SMDV. And I plug this into the top of my camera and then I have this in my hand. And it's nice because I don't have to be anywhere near my camera. I can be pacing around or talking to workshop participants, sitting in a nice warm car and be able to fire off shots from there. So that's really nice. This accessory pouch is another Shimoda thing, and what's cool about this is it's designed to hang from your camera, hang from the side of your camera, then you've got access to stuff that you might need or stuff that you use often. It's kind of cool. I love these little accessory pouches because it's a nice way of organizing all the little loose things that you typically have in your bag. I like to organize my lens cloth, well, try to organize my lens cloth, but I put a couple lens cloths and some of those Kimtech Kim scientific wipes. By the way, there's gonna be links to all this stuff in the description below. Those are affiliate links, and if you click on them, they send me a couple bucks, and it doesn't cost you guys anything, so that's that's appreciated. But I tried to put a couple lens cloths and a couple of Kimtech Kim Tech scientific wipes along with a silica pouch to kind of keep it all dry. I try to stuff a couple of these little you know, lens cloth packs, random places in my bag because I never know which pocket I'm gonna be rummaging through to try to find these. It's very useful. I've also got this BH25, which is an incredibly lightweight little ball head. I use this for vlogging purposes. We'll cover that stuff in a different video, but I typically use this on my vlogging tripod. And here I have just an SD card wallet from Think Tank or Mindshift. And I typically use SanDisk cards, um, yeah. hand warmers, lifesavers, USB powered or USB rechargeable headlamp. And it's also the kind that goes on a bill. Another wireless shutter release, really generic and they don't work very well. Infrared remote. I keep it on me just in case like the batteries die on my wireless release. It's nice to have another option, uh, but these things kind of suck. I keep, all of these silica gel packets anytime that I buy something that comes with them, I hang on to these and then when I know that I'm gonna be shooting around water, I just kinda have these loose random places in my camera bag and it helps keep stuff from getting too damp because I'm shooting in wet conditions all the time. In this top pocket, typically where I will have like a spare coat if I'm hiking in, it's also where I keep my winter gloves. So in the last couple videos from the Canadian Rockies, uh, you might have seen me wearing these. These are made by Valorette. These are called zipper mitts. I believe they're called the zipper mitt. I've... But what's awesome about these is the fact that they're a mitten. They're very, very warm. They have an adjustment strap there. They also have a place where you can put a hand warmer on the back of your hand. And because they zip up, what is cool, you can either have them zipped closed or you can unzip them and then just poke out one finger or you can zip them out a little further, poke out all four, and plus you can magnetically open your thumb and then have all of your hands uh, exposed. When you combine this with a pair of, and I believe I have them in a pocket here, with a pair of their merino wool underlayer gloves that are also touchscreen compatible, they are so warm. This is like the warmest combination that you can have because that way when you do stick out a finger, you still have a glove on and you can operate touch screen and everything like that. Very, very warm combination. This company is just awesome and I love all of their stuff. I actually have two, two pairs of gloves from them. I have these which are the zipper mitts and then in here, I also have these, which are what I wear when it's cold, but not like super crazy Canadian Rockies cold. Poke out your pointer finger and your thumb, operate all your stuff. You still have the zipper pocket for a hand warmer on the back of your hand. And really nice when it's cold, but not super cold. Uh, love these things. So in here, I also keep my DJI Mavic Air. This is mostly for vlogging purposes. What's so nice about this is the size of it. This thing folds down so compact, it's 
pretty light. It's light for a drone because if you don't have your drone on you, you're probably not gonna use it. What good is a drone if you don't have it on you? So this is small enough that you can throw in your bag and if you don't use it, it's not the end of the world. I always felt like with my Mavic Pro, I never really wanted to take it because it was just a little bit bigger than I felt like carrying. I always felt like it was either that or a telephoto lens. With the Mavic Air, it's this and a telephoto lens. So I always have that on me as well in this top pocket. Also keep some really cheap rain covers just in case I'm shooting in really bad stuff. I think these are made by Optech and they're like, I don't know, four bucks or something for a pair of two. Really cheap and they work. And then in here I've also got the controller for the Mavic Air. So let's get into the good stuff. Let's open up the top. First up, recording this right now is my A9 with a Battis 18 millimeter f2.8. That's become my vlogging setup, but I know that that sounds like the world's most expensive vlogging camera, and it's because I use it for a lot more than that. The A9 is my wildlife camera, it's my sports camera. In a lot of ways, it's it's kind of my main camera for everything other than landscape photography. For landscape photography, I use the Sony A7R 3 This is my main landscape photography camera or anything that I need just lots of resolution for. The A7R 3 has been a very solid camera for me. I have made it kind of act a little bit funny due to getting it too moist. The weather ceiling isn't quite as good as the Canon was. That's, that's definitely a truth, but overall, it's just a fantastic camera with fantastic image quality. Connected to the camera, I have the Really Right Stuff L bracket. And what's so cool about this L bracket is for one thing, it extends the grip of the camera. That way your pinky does not fall off the bottom. It extends the grip further down and it's adjustable. It's just high quality, like everything really right stuff. You can remove the side plate if you would like. It's because it's two parts. Right now connected to the camera body, is the Sony 100-400 G Master. This is my main telephoto lens. It is tack sharp, and for the amount of reach that you get, it's pretty lightweight as well. It's definitely lighter than the Canon that I had. I have the replacement foot from Really Right Stuff, and what that does is it removes the need to have any kind of plate for the bottom of your, of your tripod foot. The foot itself is Arca Swiss compatible, so you can just plop it right onto right onto your ball head and clamp down on it. It's also got uh, holes for 3 8 quarter inch, and the quick release system that Really Right Stuff uses for their camera straps. In here I also have this guy. This is the 24 to 105 from Sony. This is probably my newest lens, and there are plenty of times when I feel like 105 millimeters is enough reach that if I'm wanting to save weight, I will leave the 100 to 400 at home or in the hotel and just take this because 100 millimeters is a lot of times enough reach. And when you combine that with, this is the 16 to 35 F 2.8 G Master. Between these two lenses, if you're hiking into an area, it's a fairly light setup with just these two lenses. And it's nice anytime that you can get away with just two lenses. In here I have my little filter hive. This is where I keep all of my filters. I use breakthrough photography filters and I also use their magnetic system. So what's cool about this is thread this onto your lens. This is actually magnetic, so when I want to swap filters, I just drop it in and it's in there. If I want to swap to a different filter, pop it on. I don't have to double up on all of my, all of my filters, so uh, these will fit both my 77 millimeter and my 82 millimeter lenses, and I can just quickly swap out lenses. And when I want to use a circular polarizer, this is geared, so as I turn this, the filter also turns. Notice I don't use graduated filters, and that's because I am not a believer in graduated filters. I think they are the devil. Well, they're not the devil, but they are kind of a lazy, I guess. I like to exposure blend, and I like to have full control over dynamic range and post-processing, rather than trying to get it right in camera, because you cannot undo 
a graduated filter. A graduated filter in a way is kind of a destructive workflow if you think about it because you can't undo it. And a lot of times they create more artifacts than they're worth. They darken down mountains, they darken down trees. You're better off to expose your blend. So that's my filters. Also in the bag, I carry this. This is kind of my emergency kit. This is an idea that I got from Peter McKinnon. Inside here I have stuff that is kind of like emergency only, where if I was to forget, say, SD cards or lens cloths, or if I needed a multi-tool, I have that stuff in here, and it's just kind of a way of organizing some random stuff that I might need. And in here, more lens cloths. I try to keep, keep several of these throughout my bag. That way, whatever compartment I happen to be digging through, I can find what I need. So another thing that I typically have in my bag if I'm gonna be anywhere near water, whether it's streams or shooting seascapes, are these. These are the NRS Boundary Sock. Anytime that you've seen me standing in the ocean water or in a stream, I've probably been wearing these underneath my shoes and underneath my pants. And what's cool about this is this is much more compact and light than some kind of muck boot or waders or anything like that. Plus, these will keep you 100% dry even if the water goes up above them because this part seals against your skin and then you pair, put a pair of a rain pants over the top of that and a pair of shoes over the top of your feet and not only is it a very light setup to hike into a place with, but you're not gonna die because your waders aren't going to fill with water and then, you know, drown you. These are really lightweight, they're really cool, they keep you really warm, they're very functional, and they're easy to hike into a place or just quickly stuff in your camera bag. So, that's what I have in my bag. I think the last time I made one of these videos, I was shooting Canon, I had F-stop bags, I had, a different tri I had a different everything. Figured it was time to update this. Quick couple thoughts on the whole switch over to Sony. Part of what made the switch to Sony make sense for me is because before I had my full frame camera for landscape photography and then I had my little crop sensor camera that I was using for vlogging. But the part of the problem with that is that I was had two completely different non-compatible setups. Used different batteries, they use different lenses, and now I have two cameras that use the same lenses, the same batteries. I can use either one for photography. So I'm I'm not carrying two of everything. I'm carrying two cameras and everything else is very compatible with each other. And it makes sense for me because I'm I'm vlogging all these trips and stuff. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully some of this has been interesting. And if it hasn't, I'm sorry, but uh, there's links in the description below. Those are affiliate links. So if you click on one of those, I'm gonna get a kickback, which is real nice for me. And it doesn't cost you guys anything. So if you guys wanna support me, you can do it that way. Thank you guys so much, and we'll catch you in the next video.